scary but true, global warming is real. So everybody start taking your clothes off so you don't get too hot. <laughs> well, at least that's what I would do. It's the easiest solution. <laughs> um, the only problem with the global warming theory is that it's mostly over-exaggerated. The person who over-exaggerated the most was Al Gore, of course, the biggest hypocrite of all, the guy who spends thousands a month on utilities as he wastes so much in his luxury mansion. But it's not happening as fast as they wanted us to believe, and it's not as severe as they want us to believe. But it is real. You see, when you take something out of the ground that was put there years ago, that was called carbon capture. So when something was turned into coal by getting buried and wasn't allowed to rot, or when sea creatures or other stuff was buried by sand and it turned to oil by the heat of the earth and the pressure it was under, that was carbon dioxide that was captured from the atmosphere millions of years ago that is now carbon dioxide which is being re-released back into the atmosphere. So yes, that's true and carbon dioxide does reflect heat back down to the earth and that's why they call it a greenhouse gas. It's not the worst one. Methane's much worse. So if we did burn all the fossil fuels somehow, we would get a close environment to what it was back in dinosaur days where even the poles were, you know, very warm. But they'll, we'll never get back to the temperature things were at that point in time because there was another fixation where carbon was also fixated and became rock. See, calcium carbonate. That's what corals made out of and all kinds of rock like in Europe and stuff. It's that light yellow colored rock that's soft. Well, sea organisms, little tiny one-celled things, make little tiny shells around themselves and as they die, all these itty bitty shells which are like bone just fall to the bottom and eventually become rock. So a whole bunch of the carbon with, that was captured way back when is permanently stored as rock and we don't have to worry about the environment ever getting as warm as it was during you know, prehistoric times. Now, if the world did warm up by two degrees in the next 50 years or century, two degrees Celsius, I mean, it's pretty unlikely unless the sun had something to do with it and it cha its output changed a little bit, which it does now and then. Sometimes it gets cooler, sometimes it gets warmer. We have had mini ice ages and f even little famines in the last couple centuries because of changes in the output of the sun. But let's take for example it did warm up two degrees. Yes, the polar ice caps are melting, but not near as fast as Al Gore claims them to be. Everything he said is true, just not very true. He's kind of speaking in half-truths. But the sea would rise, yes, but the sea would actually rise more by thermal expansion of all the water in the oceans probably about by three feet just by thermal expansion, then it wouldn't rise as much just by the melting ice. Now global warming doesn't make every place in the wor world warmer. It's just average temperatures throughout the world are warmer, and average temperatures since 1998 have been the warmest dozen years in recorded history for us anyways, you know, there probably lots of times before when it was worse. But does the world seem that much warmer? Yes, sometimes some people are getting hotter summers and some people are getting colder winters. Yeah, that's the truth. Some people are getting milder winters. Global warming actually changes weather patterns more than it does by warming up every place or warming up you. So that means some places are drier, some places are wetter, some places have more hurricanes, uh, some places are warmer, and some places are colder. It really changes weather patterns. Now Al Gore's right kind of on another subject. Global warming can, if it melts all the ice caps, change how the water and everything is up in the northern hemisphere and dilute the salinity of the water also. Well, we have a great heat pump in this world and it's a big ocean current that goes up from the tropics around the equators and goes up, you know, near Greenland and keeps Europe warm and it brings warm water up there from the, around the equator area. 
Well, when it comes back down, it's cooler again. This prevents the world from being too hot near the equator and too cold in the north, unless you're really deep inland. So it's a wonderful thing that regulates our climate. And global warming can actually cause an ice age if that flow under the water, those ocean currents, switch or stop flowing. So that's another worry. Another thing that's been happening because of global warming, which nobody even expected, which has nothing to do actually with the actual carbon dioxide that we're producing or the quantity is the fact that the carbon dioxide has made the northern areas a little bit warmer except for last winter in Europe that's for sure but definitely kind of warmer in Canada most of this winter and permafrost is melting well permafrost is areas of the land that normally never completely thaw out well this land is thawing out more than it ever has before and up farther north than it ever has before and as it's melting it's producing a lot of, of worse greenhouse gas you know as methane it's about 10 times stronger at reflecting the sun down back to the earth so this could all of a sudden surprisingly cause uh, global warming greater than the carbon dioxide in the air it's just a sequence of events that it almost can become exponential if one event starts to happen it can cause a greater secondary event which is kind of happening right now and especially in Russia and northern Canada so I totally do agree that you should conserve energy, drive more fuel-efficient vehicles. If I was a lawmaker, I wouldn't let anybody drive a V8 unless they had a reason to drive a V8, like a commercial reason or a farming reason or something like that. I think they're a waste. Uh, of course, I like driving my most fuel-efficient van. And I used, before I had that, I used to drive my one-cylinder motorcycle everywhere most of the time. So do your best to conserve energy. Yes, the world is slowly warming up. Mother Nature even has a way to help prevent global warming from happening and slow it down. It's plants and sea creatures. that You know, plant-like sea creatures. Like uh, planktons and stuff. The f more greenhouse gas there is, like carbon dioxide, the faster plants grow, so the quicker they capture it. So it's almost catching up with the amount we're producing. The oceans are the same way. The more carbon dioxide we have, it dissolves very well in water, the faster plankton and stuff grow, which produce oxygen. So it's catching up too. So it's not all bad news. Nature does have a way of keeping up with the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. So personally, I'm at odds myself. I think what's going to happen is we're going to get still a little bit warmer and you're going to see more ice caps and more things happening just like Al Gore said. But by studying history and the ice ages we had and the last one was about 11,000 years ago and stuff like that, there's quite a possibility, I believe, that those ocean currents will change if things get as bad as they say and we could end up with a cooling cycle worse than any warming cycle that they're predicting. That's the scary part. Keep watching.